This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. Our Lord Jesus said something very interesting about the Father. Everything Jesus said is extremely interesting. But he said in verse 10 something that is very enlightening about our Father. He said, he's speaking of little children. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that, that in heaven. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Now I've been a Bible reader since I was 10 years old. But I really, really, really didn't see that verse until about 2005. Because Jesus is telling us there that the Father has a face. And as we talk today, Christianity has largely em embraced a pantheistic idea that God the Father is a, just a God force, like a mist or a fog. You know, people, when I start talking about the Father and quote Jesus, Matthew 5, 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God. Were those people already seeing our Lord Jesus? Sure, it was the greatest day of their life. They were sitting under the voice of the greatest one that ever walked in shoe leather. And beholding him. But he gave them a greater promise. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Now we couldn't see him in these bodies because he's ultimate light. He said to Moses, Moses, you can't see. Moses wanted to see his fullness of his glory. That's what Moses asked God. I want to see your glory. And God said, Moses, you can't see my face and live. He didn't say I don't have a face. He said you can't see it. But the good news is in our glorified bodies, we're going to see God. God. God himself. God himself. Is that good news? Amen. You know, in the 14th chapter of Revelation, it pictures the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Verse 1. On this mount with 144,000 with him, having what? His Father's name written in their foreheads. Hold that thought now. Whose name's in their forehead? The Father. All right, in Revelation 22 4, it says, their names, his name is written in their foreheads and they shall see his face. So whoever's written in their foreheads, that's whose face they're going to see. Is that right? Uh, hey, y'all are sharp now. I don't have to go back through that. <laughs> the father's name is in their forehead and Revelation 22, 4 says his name is in their forehead. Who? the Father, and they shall see his face. Yes. Now let's don't sell Jesus short, but the problem is we've sold God the Father short. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about Christianity as a whole and many of us in our past understand it. So I shorted the Father for so many years. I'm real, can I use the word raw? At that point, if I'm in church and people start giving the Father's glory to His Son, I, it's painful to me. Because I don't ever plan to do that. I know what the Father did for me. What did the Father do? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Who do we have in that verse? Two entities, God and His Son. So God gave his son. Jesus gave his life, but the father gave his son. Right? There's a precious sister over in Texas. 
she pastors a real fine big church. Brisk and I ministered there. Before we had this understanding. After I came to this understanding, not too long after we were there, I mailed one of my books. And I held my breath when I took it to the post office. <laughs> She's fiery, older, sweet lady, but fiery. And I thought, wow. She's going to send me a letter back with the corners burned off of it. You know what I'm saying. But here's what she wrote me back. Brother Hemphill, you are exactly right. I want God my Father and Jesus my Savior to both have the honor that they're due. Is that good? You know, God forbid that I would dishonor anybody here. The Bible said honor all men. A street person, right? They're due a certain honor. You know, the Bible talks a lot about glory, giving God the glory. And, uh, and, and even glory to certain men. The word glory in the New Testament is the word doxa in Greek, D-O-X-A, and it basically means in Balcomville terms <laughs> to recognize a person for who they are and give them the honor of that position. If the mayor of Pigeon Forge come in, comes in, please let me know it because I want to honor him as the mayor. Yes. Right? Right. I don't know the governor of Tennessee, but if he happens to show up, please let me know so I can give him honor. Yes. Right? right. Yep. And that's why I get up here and give some of these men, the Bible said they're worthy of double honor, the labor in the word. Amen? Right. But above all, let's give God the Father the glory that he deserves and demands by understanding who he is and what he alone has done. Amen. So that's why all of my books pertain to glory to God. Jesus has awesome glory. No, that's not ambiguous in scripture. What is Jesus' glory? John 1.14, the word became flesh and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That's high honor. That's high glory. I spent a thousand years in subjection to him on this planet called the millennium, right? And serve him gladly and bow at his feet and kiss his feet and honor him. But Paul tells me that at the end of that thousand years, Jesus will deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father. And then shall the Son himself be subject to the Father, that God may be all in all. Yes. Hello? Amen. To God be the glory. Anyway, don't take it too fast. Labriska and I don't have the luxury of only worshiping and ministering to people who believe as we do. God has thrust us into both Trinitarian and oneness settings and called upon us to minister to them where they are. Baptist, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, sometime out of our comfort zone. We're not there to remake them or try and convince them that everything they believe is wrong. People don't care what you know or how much you know until they know how much you care. Did Jesus tell everybody everything he knew? Did Paul tell the Corinthians everything he knew? He said, I fed you with milk and not with meat. He had lots of meat to share, but he said, you're not able to bear it. Amen. So back to Mark 4, God give us wisdom as our Lord Jesus had 
Jesus spake the word of God to them by parables as they could receive it. So God help us to understand what people can receive. There's a precious Assemblies of God pastor in our little town there. So the pastor's about 225 people. And he, he and his son have a yard service. So we needed someone to mow and keep up the, the yard. And so we hired this minister and his son. Well, I was by him like I was everybody. I am everybody else. I just want people to know the father. You know, if I'm flying with somebody on an airplane, I'm sitting by him. I'm not sitting there wondering, do they wash feet at their church? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not important. It's not important. It might be important, but it's not my focus. Amen. I don't sit there and wonder if they use grape juice or wine at the Lord's Supper. Now stay with me now. Keep smiling and keep loving. I'm talking, huh? Who said that? I'm talking about right focus now. I'm talking about keeping the main thing the main thing. The world is not in a mess because they don't wash feet. Come on now. The world is not in a mess because they do use grape juice or wine or what. That is not what's got the world in the mess. The world is in a mess because they do not know God. The one that spoke from Mount Sinai and lightning flashed up and down the mountain and trum trumpets blasted and people ran screaming and saying, don't let him speak again or we'll die. That's, God. That's the God I'm talking about. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter believed just like Paul. He started 1 Peter off the same way. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So he's the only way to God. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Right. That's major, major important. Peter said in 1 Peter 3.18, Jesus suffered to bring us to God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, but I'd have you to know, this is what Paul wanted us to know. If he's here tonight at the conference, he might say this. He said, this is what I'd have you to know. Underline this in your Bible, please. Because Paul makes it real simple for all of us. I would have you know now you, you can bear down on this. The head of every man is Christ. You need to kind of go soft on this. The head of every woman is the man. <laughs> Hurry on by that. <laughs> but then bear down again on this. The head of Christ is... God. What? God. Did Paul believe the head of Christ is... God? God? Just like the head of every man is Christ. Christ. Everybody say it. The head of every man is Christ. Christ. The head of Christ is God. God. Now, when I get into one of these conversations on the phone. See, God has people to call about songs, this and that. Do you still have the soundtrack to that song recorded in 1975? I said, well, it never did have a soundtrack. Never did have a sound. We didn't have them in those days. Anyway, let me tell you this. This brother came to mow the yard for several weeks. Brother Joe, I didn't jump on him. Didn't want to jump on him. He's a sweet man. I love it. And I get him a prayer clause and I pray for him. But one day the Holy Spirit nudged me. I knew he was coming that day, and the Holy Spirit nudged me today. How I many know oh, God's timing is perfect? Hold him up. You know it. His timing is perfect. And so, 
About one o'clock, he was out there mowing. I told my secretary, I said, get some of this material together because I'm going to talk today. Went out around the picnic shelter and he came by in the mower and I flagged. He came over there, took a breather and we just visiting. And I said, have you ever noticed that Christianity mostly preaches Christ to the exclusion of the Father? Amen. Well, he said, that's right. And I began to share this truth with him and I was amazed at how open he was to see it. And in a few minutes he told me. He said, Brother Hemphill, just this morning while I've been riding the moor around here, God was speaking to me that we Christians are worshiping the man Christ Jesus. And perhaps we should look higher to his father Amen. and worship the father. Is that what Jesus said? The hour is coming now is when the true worshiper will worship the father. But the father seeketh such to worship him. Right? Amen. So God's timing was perfect. Did he get it? Sure he got it. Not for what I said, but what God was already giving him before I talked to him. That very morning on the lawnmower. Now, folks, I can't orchestrate stuff like that. That's why I'm not in management. I'm in sales. <laughs> Can you say amen? amen? So hallelujah. Mark it up for another one that knows the truth. Right? Let's look at Paul's view of Christian, true Christian worship. Two verses tell it plainly. He says in Ephesians 5, 19, 20, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I notice your songbook. I love the title. Sing and make me music in your heart to the Lord. What? Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. What is ambiguous about that? Right? What part of always don't we understand? How many has got a pretty good understanding of always? Sure, y'all are some of the greatest people I ever met. And then he says, for everything. How many has a pretty good concept of everything? All right, underline this now because it could not be more important. Always. This is the great apostle Paul. This is not Joel, this is Paul. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to make sure we got it, he said it again. And this is Colossians 3, 16, 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts to who? God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving what? Thanks to God the Father. Through him. If I pastored a church, that would be up on the wall in big letters. Because Christianity worship is mostly... I don't care if they're Trinitarians or oneness. Most of Christian worship is Jesus only. I love y'all and I hope you love me, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. That Briscoe and I are in all kinds of churches and I don't care what label they go under, most of the worship is Jesus only. Right? But Jesus said, worship the Father. Paul said, worship the Father. So Brisk and I have decided to become worship recruiters for God the Father. Jesus walked. He went around recruiting people to worship the Father. You know, there's benefits in it. Ninth chapter of John, verse 31 said, If any man be a worshiper of God, him he hears when he prays. I like that, don't you? Him, he, hear it. If we're worshipers of the Father. So, 
Anyway, we're called to say this. I'm not saying there are not other important issues in Scripture. But I'm saying we don't need to be fussing over the fourth commandment till we get the first commandment right. <laughs> and Jesus said the first and greatest is listen Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Right here. I went through the Bible and I found 65 verses that said God is one. And I couldn't find one authentic verse that said he's three. I had my secretary to type them up and put one in red 65 times. Be sure and get this before you leave. Or if you don't, because it's just scripture, it's not me. So that's say the word of God. But hey, nobody can deny it. If they can deny 65 verses, go ahead and give up on them right now. <laughs> right? 65 verses say God is one. Jesus is our brother. We're heirs of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He's the firstborn among many brethren. So this is what this is about. Is Jesus equal with God? I found 12 clear verses that say, and they're right here in this track, say that Jesus is at the right hand of God. Not majesty, power, it does say that, but 12 times it says he's on the right hand of God. So, you know where I believe he is? Right hand of God. I'm slow, but I'm not that slow. <laughs> I was born at night, but not last night. Here's a <laughs> Folks, this could not be more serious. And it could not be more wonderful to find out who your father is. Right? Jesus said in John 20, 17, go tell my brethren. Is that what he said? They're my brethren. Go tell my brethren that I send to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So I won't be happy till everybody knows that. Brother Anthony won't either. We're eating up with it. Dan Gill, we're eating up with it. Jesus said to the Father, Father, the zeal of your house has eaten me up. There were lots of religious people that could go by that temple and it didn't bother him or them at all that there was thieves and robbers in there robbing the people and all. It didn't bother. Listen to me now. There's a lot of people, they didn't care at all what was happening in the temple. But it ate Jesus up. Is that right? It ate him up. He said, Father, the zeal of your house has eaten me up. It's supposed to be a house of prayer to all people and they've made it a den of thieves. Father, would you let me get a whip and drive them, drive them out of there? Right? And the day he got the okay, he did it. Right? Now, it might not bother some people to rob God of his glory. But it, uh, you know, to see that happen on TV and radio and in Christian churches, but it eats me up. Because I was guilty of it for so long. Right? Now I want my Father and my Savior Jesus to both receive what they're due. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. God declaring himself. You know, there's nobody can define God God are those he puts his word in as he did our Lord Jesus to speak about the Father. Jesus is a perfect revealer of the Father. But God declaring himself. I found lots of verses. God declaring who he is. Nobody authorized me to disagree with God. So God declaring himself, is Jesus equal with God? Jesus is our brother. 
God of the Bible is one, not three. And Paul's view of Christian worship. If you want to arm yourself with those, they're free. Anyway, to God be the glory. And this battle is not ours. It's God's. And whatever's wrong in the world, he knows how to fix it. Right? Right? But let me tell you a serious problem. If people believe that God is about that tall, they do not fear him. What has happened to the fear of God? You know, when I was a boy, people, even unsaved people, had a certain reverence for God. I mean, television and, 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 and movies profane his name. No regard. Profane the name of Jesus Christ. But anyway, I'm just saying, let's get God as big as he is. And then we won't have to say, when we need something, you say, well, I think God can do it. But folks, I'm telling you, this is so important. And it's so important that we get filled with it. And if you're not qualified to speak it, get Brother Anthony's book or refer him to 21st Century Reformation website or get, you know, some of our material or what and put it in their hands with backed up by prayer. And it's amazing how many people are hungry to know this truth. I encounter them every week that tell me, wow, this is so simple. I never did understand it. Right?